Teamwork. What is it? It's people with matching skills, working toward and achieving a common purpose and goal. And it can have a major impact on risk and safety. So it's critical in aviation, and it occurs when every team member, on the ground and in the air, performs and contributes in the best way possible to achieve a safe and successful outcome. A good leader recognises team members have different strengths and limitations, but ensures through communication, programmes and culture that the individuals are unified to work together in a coordinated manner to achieve a desired result. The need to get people to work together as a team is crucial. It's like a motor. If you take one part out of a motor, it won't go. It's black and white. It, it just will not work. And it's the same with a team. The world is so full of examples of teamwork. Referring to the cave example with those wild boars, that was not a one-man operation to get those people out. It was teamwork. The Crespigny with the A380, that was teamwork that got those people back safely. Sully in the Hudson River, that was teamwork, you know. Yes, the media and we as humans always like to hold up a hero and say, wow, this guy or this person was the hero that made this happen. That's, I guess that's just how we've evolved as human beings, but deep down inside we know that it was teamwork that made it happen. And we, all, we, all, we all tend to be a little bit selfish and we all tend to want to say, I did this, I'm really proud of what I did, but hey, we wouldn't be without the help of so many other people. And I clearly recognise that. It makes a lot of difference when people realise that they're, they're a part of a team. One profession that exemplifies teamwork is air traffic control. They're an essential link in the chain in keeping aviation safe, both on the ground and in the air. Teamwork is important and teamwork comes from uh, understanding one another's jobs. All the staff in the tower here, after they've been here a few years, can do all of those roles and we understand each other's jobs. Coordination is a really important factor with air traffic control, whether it's coordination between individuals in the tower cab, between the tower and the aircraft, tower and ground staff that are moving on the aerodrome, or with the terminal control unit and the en route sectors. So that is really encouraged through this process of uh, assessing their contextual behaviours, which helps identify how they're working within that team environment. Everyone is very friendly with each other. Uh, there's always a good mood upstairs as well, so that kind of helps with the team culture. Most of what we do here at Bankstown is visual. Um, we are trained not to use the radar. We look out the window, we sight aircraft, and we space them apart accordingly, just looking out the window. Binoculars are just another one of the many tools that we have upstairs, so back to the teamwork again. Other people in the cab help you sight aircraft if required as well, like our coordinator, he's in the middle, helps the aerodrome controllers with sighting aircraft and bring them in safely. We all have each other's backs, so if you hear someone miss a read back, you have responsibility to say, hey, this happened, just double check it with the pilot. Um, so back to that teamwork aspect again, we're all looking after each other's backs. We are a very, very quirky little business out here from the point of view that the business actually is in a remote area and everyone has to live in this area. Because you need to be able to work out here in a group environment, it's just important. If you, if you take away the group environment, the whole rest of the structure will collapse. You've got to, got to spend all day together, you eat together, you live in the same house, so you really need a really good team sort of environment and team spirit to be able to live and work out here, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're really lucky, we've got a brilliant team of guys and, and everyone's good at chipping in, good at working together. When they arrive, we empower them to be part of the team. They have group tasks and they've got to learn how to do it. So not only are we teaching them to be commercial pilots, we're also teaching them some basic life skills as well. How to actually participate in a small community and the running of a small community and how to help other people that are in the community as well. Everyone's friends, so I think everyone's so approachable that if anyone does have something that they're maybe a little bit unsure about, everyone feels very comfortable to kind of go to someone and to ask the question. Everyone's very willing to help each other and I think that's a huge part of it. So I think for everyone to leave their egos at the door is uh, pretty rare in the world of aviation. So yeah, we're very lucky out here.
First of all, we, we, we roster our teams together consistently. So although our teams do change around subtly, you get crewed with people on a frequent basis. So you end up establishing a rapport, forming relationships with your own colleagues. And the same is true of the medical staff. So we're fairly small groups. You're always working with the same people. So that naturally fosters a very strong working relationship within the teams. And then we translate that across into our training as well. So we operate together and we train together. And that just naturally builds a strong team environment. One of my sayings is you've got to go and sit in the dust with your people. So I spend a lot of time on the road visiting. So I stay engaged with my people. They all know who I am and they should know who I am and they, they can ring me anytime. If we look at the evidence around high performing teams, um, uh, where we're talking about military teams in warfare situations, emergency service personnel, like ambulance, fire, emergency services. What we do find from a lot of work in this area that what's really important in teamwork is having clear standard operational procedures. Everybody knows what they've got to do. Everybody knows their role. Having a defined leader is very important so that there's no confusion as to who's in control. It's about getting that right um, standard right from the start, the right level of discipline, building the team, encouraging input and allowing people to do their jobs. Don't micromanage. You know, the more you micromanage people, as we know, the more you're told to do something, the less likely you are to do it anyway. So really building that rapport with the crew, and that goes right through the organisation. Clearly defined procedures, correct phraseology and standard challenge and response checklists and phrases are very important for building that teamwork as well. Even little things like giving the oh, command a simple comment at the end of a brief along the lines of Okay, look, we can all make mistakes. Um, you know, if you see anything you're unsure of, you're not happy about, I want anyone in the crew, just speak up and let me know. You know, we're in this together, we're a team. We put those forward as ways for a part to empower people, particularly if they're new to the organisation, to feel comfortable to speak up. We talk about a um, cockpit authority gradient, as uh, fairly well known these days. You don't want to have that too steep where it's a very authoritarian, I'm the captain, you're the first officer you do what I say. You don't want to have it too flat where it's, yeah, g'day mate, uh, you do it today, do it your way, I don't mind, I'm just the captain sitting here today. Um, so there's a happy medium there, so that's why we talk about an appropriate uh, cockpit authority gradient. There has to be a certain amount of authority and a hierarchy for that respect of authority to be within that organisation without making it too authoritarian and without making it too friendly or chummy, if you like. It's important to get time we're required to get people together to understand how they can work more effectively and efficiently. As soon as you start getting a, a breakdown across the team, then no surprises, your levels of trust will start to go down, communication will be ineffective. Most of the time the challenge is, is people tend to look at the world from different perspectives with different personality traits. Some people are abrupt, some people are, are kind. There's a, a nice healthy mix out there. Most of the time if you get people to actually genuinely understand each other, the bigger challenge, and particularly for males within our system, is that we've got to get them to have the real conversations. If you looked at Robert, he had two opportunities in airtime to actually put his hand up and to say, you know, things actually aren't quite right at the moment. I haven't had enough sleep. I'm not where I need to be performance-wise. But he chose not to do that. We kind of got a response that was, no, I'm OK, I'm OK. And the same with Wilco a couple of times. The important thing with teamwork is to get to a point where people feel comfortable with each other to be able to talk about the important things going on in their lives and that is the critical bits because they're the human factors that are going to make the fundamental difference as to why things are not going as well as they could be. Getting out of the workplace and doing something, we've done a lot of adventure activities so we deliberately want to put people under higher levels of stress. The idea is, is twofold. You want to start to let people work together under relationships where they do have to rely on each other and they have to grow a high trust relationship to look after each other. More importantly, what I tend to find on days like that, it's what happens after hours. So it's being able to get into an environment where you're out of the workplace, you're a little bit more relaxed, you build up a trust relationship and a working relationship with people, you get to know a little bit more about them on a personal level rather than a professional level. And that tends to engender different relationships that, that build higher performing teams. And you see it all the time. Anytime you invest some time to take people off site and do those type of bonding activities, you do tend to find that the outcome is better relationships, enhanced communication, in many respects a better understanding on a personal level of where people are at. We've seen people manage significant time pressure, high stressors, family issues, and still deliver consistently high performance 
because they've got good self-awareness. They're on top of those various human factors that are impacting their lives both professionally and personally. They're talking to people about it, they're getting the support they need, and they're still able then to manage their professional life and deliver the high standards required from our industry. We also have, I suppose, another bit of a, um, a control if we haven't managed to get everybody in that environment, then we try to engage that teamwork through things like um, briefings or through sign-ons. Because psychologically we know that if somebody has met somebody, um, flown together, it makes it easier to bond as a team versus two people that have never ever met. If workload is so high or the turnaround time is short, if the pilot has been able to come in and at least do a PA to the crew, um, said their name, hello, that helps a little bit more than uh, a pilot and a cabin crew that haven't even spoken or worked together. So we build that in um, as a bit of a cultural way to say, look, try to do what you can to bond as a crew. I remember at a CRM course having it compared to a soccer team once that uh, here we are putting a crew together to go and fly an aeroplane. Imagine if you had a soccer team that you know, nobody had ever met anybody before. Um, we just threw a few people in different positions, didn't communicate what you're actually expected to do, who we were playing today or how we were going to play. How do you think they'd perform on the field? You know, probably not very well. So if we're building teamwork, it's about having defined roles, defined positions, building up that communication style and obviously practicing. Now that practice comes in uh, not just with that same crew, but how you do your role in your daily flying, your checks, your simulator exercises, if that's what you do doing it the same way so that we increase that level of standardisation and discipline and expectation for everybody you know, when you're flying with people you haven't flown with before.